Hi there. My name is John, and I am pleased to present to you the Campus Condos. Uh, my name is John Lane. Uh, I am the founder of Campus Condos. We have uh, five different people on our team, but I'm the guy who, who gets to tell you about our, our wonderful transaction. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it is a condo conversion. Let's start with that. There's 14 uh, small residential units, one retail, and we're going to build in for uh, 14 new storage pieces. Okay, here we go. This is a... B minus C plus property in an exquisite A minus location. Uh, heart of uh, Portland uh, on the north, northeast side. It's just a spectacular place. It's literally across the street from uh, Portland Community College, the Ca uh, Cascade campus. It's right next to McMinimins. This is a light facelift type of renovation. We are not doing structural. We're not doing anything heavy lift. This is new cabinetry, new flooring, new paint, sheetrock in some places, uh, brand new appliances throughout, dishwasher, stove, washer, dryer, the, 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 the normal things you would do on a, uh, a value add transaction. The difference being these are one step higher in quality and we will be converting them to condos rather than apartments okay uh one thing to import we're vacillating between this 425 and 450 price per square foot that's i'm going to refer to that uh, occasionally uh 425 is the safety number 450 is what we think price per square foot that these units will sell for uh, the retail space we've comped out, it's 288 a square foot, and you'll see how that transpires. So I, I think at exit, we'll be at a 4.5 range at, at sale. Uh, obviously, there's some costs involved, uh, but ultimately, I think this is going to be a very profitable transaction. Um, we've got about one, $1 million, slightly over. Uh, of investor capital, our equity multiple because of the loans we're getting, loan singular, the loan we're getting is really, really extraordinary, which helps our investors have a really nice return. And because this is a very, very fast transaction, the IRR is off the charts. It's kind of amazing. Okay, there you go. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This is the building. Right. This is front. This street right here is Killingsworth. You'll hear us refer to it as Killingsworth. We've officially changed the name of the building to Campus Condos just about a week ago. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, but it's a really quite quite pretty building. Uh, 1913 construction. Uh, I keep pushing the wrong button. Uh, just kind of give you an idea. That's the bike shop. And that's the back end. Uh, yeah, not as pretty on the back end, but yeah, that's right. Okay, this is an important piece of information, right? We think that this is going to sell for about four point five when it's all done. It's currently tax assessed at three point two. It last sold seven years ago for two point eight, and we have it under contract for one point eight. Okay, so you're scratching your head wondering what's going on. We've gotten that question a fair bit. I'm going to address why we're getting this at such a bargain. I want to be really, really clear. It's a financial issue. It's not a structural issue. We've had countless two dozen different contractors in the building. The building is sound, uh, very, very strong. I mean, it's 100 plus years old and it's it's in spectacular shape. The reason we're getting a really good discount is because of financial mismanagement on the, the current owner. Okay, uh, zoned RM2, that's something important to, to point out. Our first exit is sell them as condos. Our second exit, hold them as apartments and sell them down the road. 
Third exit is we can turn this into a five-story, 30-unit uh, complex with, uh, with no issues from the city. It's by right. So that's really important. Um, so we've got lots of exit options. There's our, that's, that's kind of the plan C. If all things else falls apart, we can turn it into a five-story building. Uh, so lots of, lots of options. This is the tax assessed value from Multnomah County. This is showing that the last recorded sale was 2.8. And so the magic question, why are we getting this discount? Um, terrible, terrible property management, really, truly, epically bad property, property management. When they sent us their financials, this is what they sent us. They told us uh, nine studios, five, one bad, or one bed, and it turns out there are six studios and eight one beds. So their their and their so their rent roll was obviously not being managed well. The other piece is it went from a ten thousand dollar a month rental uh, for that commercial space through COVID. They made some panic moves, and now it's down to. 3,600. So that just kind of kicked the crap out of the NOI. And that is why we're getting this like spectacular transaction. Um, you'll see the math here just to kind of prove out. I did the exact same math on both sides. Uh, yeah, this, if this was being managed correctly, this would be a three and a half million dollar building. So pretty, pretty happy with how this is turning out. Uh, Portland. Portland's been in the news a little bit. Uh, I just want to clarify about like, this is a world-class, wonderful city. It really, truly is. We went through some stuff a couple years ago. That's all blown over. A lot of it was blown out of proportion. Some of it was legit. Uh, but I want, I want you to know that this is a pristinely beautiful city. Uh, and it's a great place to invest. So what makes Portland so great? It's light rail, right? We're a small-ish city. We're 26th nationally. Um, that, that puts us in, I mean, so Seattle's up to the north, San Francisco's to the south. We're the only real commerce hub between the two, uh, between Seattle and San Francisco. So we're actually in a great spot. Uh, we the portland is built on rivers and light rail like that's how this 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 infrastructure works we're 700,000 in the core of the city and we're about 2.2 million in the outskirts right our our building is literally right here it's a block away it's sorry it's six blocks away from the light rail system okay uh, again, this is Multnomah County. It's the wealthiest county in the states. Average incomes are $1,400 a month. I'm sorry, per week. Scratch that, $1,400 per week. Uh, in our zip code, 97217, we're seeing uh, $102,000 of household income. So we're, it's a very, very well-to-do uh, pocket in the city. So pretty amazing. Unemployment, pretty much in line, 3.4, pretty much in line with the rest of the country. We've got great employment. Wages are exceptional. Like we're th $32 an hour. The rest of the country is 29. So we're, we're doing pretty well there. Um, yeah, we've got a really vibrant economy. Uh, social trades, retail, healthcare. Healthcare is a big piece of our economy. OHSU, Oregon Health Science and University. Uh, you'll note that we are a highly educated, highly compassionate uh, city, right? This is the makeup of who has degrees in Portland. It's interesting. 25 year olds and above anybody who's a 25 year old and above probably it's, it's better than a 50 50 that they have a, a four-year degree like 52 percent 52 and a half percent 
of our population has a four-year degree. Like that's a very educated, this is why, uh, this is why like these kinds of jobs, my wife has a master's degree, education, right? That's why these kinds of jobs. And one other thing, uh, spectacularly smart women, like significantly smarter women than men by average. It's kind of funny. Uh, pretty amazing, actually. Okay. Uh, we talked about location. <clears throat> Excuse me. We talked about location. These are all of the small mom and pop shop type uh, Jamaican food, Thai food, Mexican food, banks, like anything you would want within a five or 10 block radius. Like this is a beautiful city. And specifically this neighborhood, Humboldt neighborhood is really epic. Uh, this is kind of an overview. That is Portland Community College. This is why we're calling it Campus Condos because, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty evident. Uh, we're completely engulfed by the, uh, the, the college. So I'm pretty happy with that. The max station is four tenths of a mile away. Right. That's pretty, uh, pretty easy walk. This is the max line. That's highway I-5. That's like connects Alaska to Mexico. Um, yeah. So it's just this really, really great spot. So what are we selling them for? Here's the thing. Like see these kids behind me? Yeah. They're my niece and nephews. And they're all in their mid early twenties and none of them can afford afford to buy their home. Uh, I bought my first house when I was 19 years old. I'm 56 now. Being able to buy my first home has had a magnifying impact on my life for 35 years. Most people nowadays are not able to be a single person buying their own home. That's pretty unlikely. So that's why I started this business model. My goal is to make affordable housing and not have to have these young people pay rent, right? It's kind of stupid to pay rent if you've got the option to buy. So our whole business model is affordable starter homes. These are not high frills. These are not uh, glamour condos. Our goal is to keep them affordable. So, uh, do, do, do. Here's the bike shop. We talked about that. We're in negotiation. We'll be probably in this 1.3, maybe 1.4, maybe 1.2. It depends on how things structure out. They have definitely indicated that they want to buy. This is a 23-year-old business. They moved here during the pandemic, about two and a half years old, uh, two and a half years ago. They are a pillar of the community, right? Everybody knows who North Portland Bike Works. We're glad to have them as a tenant because we know that they're financially sound. It's a nonprofit bike shop. Welcome to Portland. <laughs> uh, it's a nonprofit bike shop. They sell used bikes, uh, usually garnered from police auctions. Right? They're they're they're, they're, they're this cycle of philanthropy here that just has a resonation that, that resonates through the community. They want to buy. We think we're going to be in this price range. This is the total for all of the units combined. So uh, these, I mentioned these are smaller units, 450, 550 square feet. That's important because most buyers do not have children. 70% do not have, this could be a young couple with their first home or an older couple downsizing, but 70% of the buyers do not have children under the age of 18. So the size is important because I think that's really in that sweet spot where it's still affordable specifically and attainable. Okay, so going back to this problem, $115,000 is kind of what you need in order to buy a house in the U.S. right now. Uh, we're, that's an obvious problem. Affordability and uh, availability, we are solving those problems. We're bringing on 14 units 
this month. Um, and we've got a pipeline of several more. This, right, $2,700 is the kind of the average mortgage in the U.S. right now. Our mortgage for our clients, half, like half the normal going rate. This is the rent in the U.S., right? In the last couple of years, we had this COVID spike. Rents are now averaging $1,845. We're going to be $500 below that for their mortgage. Like, I really want to stress that these are really quality homes, but they're starter homes. Uh, there you go. So, uh, exposed brick everywhere. Gorgeous. Uh, exposed brick. all On all the exterior walls, exposed brick. So, you've got this beautiful patina that's just Frankly, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. There's small kitchen. We euphemistically call them one butt kitchens. Uh, they're small kitchens. Uh, they're studios and one bedrooms. All right. Uh, this is a visual walkthrough, and I'm going to talk for just one and let you kind of walk through. Um, so these are the bathrooms. Uh, nice, not opulent, but nice. Uh, going into the kitchen, you've got a uh, uh, laundry room, right? That's a fairly important thing in a small home, right? You you don't want to walk down the street. You don't want to go 10 blocks carrying your laundry. You want to have laundry in your home. So that's a fairly expensive upgrade for us. But I think the quality speaks for itself and gives the the home buyer a sense of self okay so i'm going to pause that and then we're going to watch going in so we're creating a hallway there's a there's a door access already we're creating a hallway so that all of our tenants all of our residents owners will have access to their own storage the bike shop also want, is currently using the, the basement as bike storage, inventory storage. So we're going to systematize this a little bit better, make it more functionally useful for the, both the bike shop and the resident owners upstairs. All of the storage lockers are deeded, so they have their own security. That's their space as well. Okay. Okay. So floor plans, right? Uh, second and third floor. These are bigger units. So 450 and 550 is pretty much the standard. Uh, there's the basement. Here's the sources and uses tab. Everybody has to have that. Cost, we're, 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 we're going to pick up about $2 million in debt. We're bringing about a million dollars to the table. Uh, our purchase price is 1.8. We're getting an 80, 20, 100 loan. Uh, might be an 85, 15, 100 loan, still to be determined. Uh, but this is the package that we're going to be at. So we'll have a total of about $3 million total spend. I love our pricing. We, we've talked about our pricing. I personally, I'm not going to state this, but I have an opinion. I think that we're going to be in that 450 price per square foot range. Uh, we've gone hyper conservative on our estimations. Uh, these numbers are all based on that four and a quarter price per square foot. I have been to think it might be higher. Um, we have comps all over the board. We've been, I've been tracking comps for the last year and so there's there's comps in the high 300s and there's comps in the low 500s. So just to, to give you kind of a, a framework. But this is, I think, an incredibly good value for a homeowner. You're talking $1,200 a month to make your mortgage. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, here's our timeline. Uh, we're going to do reno and, uh, we do have to do eviction like that's kind of sucks, but that's the nature of this business. So it'll take about four months to, uh, 
uh, either negotiate purchases with current tenants or have them gracefully exit. Uh, we pay them to leave. That's an Oregon statute. So uh, when they leave gracefully, we will actually pay them a pretty large stipend uh, for them to help find a new place. So that's pretty nice. Um, when we start selling five months from now, we expect to sell the first two units and the retail unit, which will effectively eradicate the first mortgage. Like this first, that in the fifth and sixth month, we will have no mortgage, which I think is really, really important. Um, we'll, our plan is to not have any mortgage risk whatsoever. Time frame. Uh, this is probably pretty solid. Um, we've looked at this. We've, we've had no less than two dozen contractors consulted on this project. We have a very, very strong timeline of uh, entrance and exit through the process. So there's this 120-day notice part, right? Here's when we begin selling our first units. I think we're going to be really close to a completed transaction by December. I'm really clear up front. This could last 12 to 18 months. It's likely to last 10 to 14 months. So I just want to be really, really clear on that. Um, we have buyers waiting in line, uh, going through the going through the the pre qualification process right now. And we're not, we're five months away from being able to sell one, but we've, we've got a list of three people who want to buy. One is already going through the pre-qualification process. So uh, there is risk. I want to really be clear about this. Every real estate investment has risk. I want to be clear. So we do not know until we have a signed document what our price per square foot will be. Uh, the Kevin, I didn't know this person three months ago. He connected with me on LinkedIn. He's been following me. He reached out and said, hey, he knows the area. He loves the place. He likes the video, the walkthrough video. He wants to buy one, right? And so although we don't know what the, the true market value will be for these properties, we know based on Kevin's response, that 450 a square foot is a reasonable price to ask. A uh, regulatory process. Portland does have uh, rather long regulatory issues. So we've mitigated that by having pre-dev pre meetings with the city several times. I have personally met with the city twice. Our contractors have met with the city half a dozen times. Like they're very aware of our project. They're very aware of our plan. They do not see any hiccups or, or, or problems along the way. Uh, I often think about like, can I, I, I put myself in your shoes. You're an investor. I put you, my, myself into your shoes and I want to know where the money goes. We've partnered up with Builder Trend. Builder Trend allows you, the investor, to track dollar for dollar all of the renovation costs, right? That's the biggest risk in this transaction. Where's the money going? You will have 100% transparency in the transaction with us, right? That between QuickBooks and uh, Builder Trend, those two organizations talk to each other, sync up, and through that, you will be able to see where the money goes, right? That to me, Full transparency, especially in these kind of uncertain times, I want to give you as much clarity and visibility in our transaction as possible. So we have a pretty solid team, um, $200 million in total career volume. Like we've done a lot. We've myself, Jeff, Robert, William, Dale, we have got an amazing team of professionals putting this transaction together. We are here to serve you. This is one of many that we've done. We've got a deep bench of expertise. So talking about builder trend again and that full transparency, 
Mitigating risk is my most important job. I want to know what the outcomes are, what the predictive outcomes are. Showing you every step of the way as we go through this process is paramount, full transparency through this process. And that's why we're using Avester, right? The same reasons we're using these other softwares allow us to, to, to communicate with our investors very clearly, very transparently. Uh, you'll get transparent accounting and automated K-1s. This is a simple program to use for our investors. It's intuitive. It's relatively easy to manage. So uh, that's where we are. We have, do, 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 uh, we have 800 in hard commit from our investors. We have a little bit of fuzzy math on three of our investors. So I'm not really sure where they're going to land. Um, we're, I'm counting 800,000 currently uh, of our million. We have several investors waiting in the wings. They're waiting for a couple of final details to get squared out away on the paperwork. And then we should be fully subscribed. Okay. That is campus condos. I really appreciate, yeah, I really appreciate your time. I get tongue tied. Uh, I'm always a little goofy, but I really appreciate your time. Thank you for, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Please get in touch with us. We have a very close closing date. If you're interested, uh, in investing, please let me know. And kind of just one final recap on the numbers. Um, I think these are pretty amazing numbers. Um, I, I hope you do. Uh, I hope you do too. <laughs> All right. Please call contact. Take care. Bye-bye.